Let me see what you... A bracelet? With the symbol of House Bray, Anna Bray's personal sigil. Guardian, the inner circle will be grateful that you have returned this artifact to the tower. And now what? A ring? With the symbol of the Warlock Pujari? Death again? Like Anna Bray, a guardian fallen to the second death? Lost to us. We shall study these objects, Guardian. Learn why they have been pulled through time. Welcome back, Guardians. With the secret room in the new social space in Destiny 2, many are wondering who is Anna Bray. Looks like a journal. Anna Bray. But I can't tell who. Pretty much the entire thing is redacted. And there are whole pages missing. Something about all this seems wrong. Am I worrying too much? In Destiny 1, theories emerged speculating that Anna Bray was the Exo Stranger, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why that is not the case, and I would like to draw your attention to some of the most neglected lore in Destiny 1, Owl Sector. Whilst there are only a couple of items that refer to Anna Bray in Destiny 1, there is a wealth of information about how the Bray family operates in the lore of Owl Sector. For those who do not know, just prior to Rise of Iron, Bungie released an alternate reality game, an ARG, where they released an infection into the Destiny player base, indicated by these buzzing colours above players' heads. As more and more players became infected with the SIVA prototypes, a website updated which essentially released a communications chat log with how the Vanguard were trying to control the infection. A civilian group known as Owl Sector were called in to help manage the disaster and advise the Vanguard. In trying to control the situation, Owl Sector discovered that the SIVA mites originated from a Clovis Bray laboratory. And in the process, Owl Sector dug up a whole bunch of Clovis Bray documentation. Notes that emphasized the corruption and dark history of Clovis Bray. The artwork in this video, primarily the templates you see, are created by Brandon McCammy and was only possible with your support on Patreon. Patreon donations go towards funding artwork like this to complement the lore of Destiny. Once again, when this video goes live, I'll be live over on Twitch, helping people get through the raid. Feel free to come and join. This is Marlin Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Firstly, let's address the whole Anna Bray is the Exo Stranger theory. I think there is quite definitive proof disproving this theory. The first thing is, the Exo Stranger is not a Guardian. In Destiny 1, you meet the Exo Stranger on Venus when she warned you of the Vex, and this is what it said. You're not a Guardian. No, I was not forged in light. Whilst the Exo Stranger is not a Guardian, we know Anna Bray to be a Guardian. This is reinforced in the exotic questline for No Time to Explain in Destiny 1. The mission description reads, You want another story about the Twilight Gap? Anna Bray, the Hunter? We all dug deep that day. We all touched the light in ways we never thought we could or should. Anna though, when she fired the gun, where her golden blasts hit home, she left behind the pools of light, like splashes of sunlight that burned and burned. Lord Shax. This quite nicely confirms that Anna Bray was a golden gun hunter. During the exotic questline, we actually go to Twilight Gap and see these pools of light that are being pulled through time, and we complete this mission by collecting Anna Bray's bracelet. You hand in the bracelet to Lakshmi 2, who says this. Let me see what you... a bracelet? With the symbol of House Bray, Anna Bray's personal sigil. Guardian, the inner circle will be grateful that you have returned this artifact to the tower. Lakshmi 2. As the exotic quest continues, you eventually return back to Lakshmi 2 after defeating the Vex groundskeeper. And she says... And now what? A ring, with the symbol of the Warlock Pujari. Death again, like Anna Bray, a guardian fallen to the second death, lost to us. 
we shall study these objects, Guardian, learn why they have been pulled through time. Once again, the law is quite clear that Anna Bray was a Guardian, and secondly, what a lot of people miss is she has died. She has had her second death. After her first death, she would have been risen as a guardian, but then she obviously died again and was unable to be revived, i.e. her second death. I think this is important to understand considering we find Anna Bray's bracelet in the new tower. This means that the journal was not put here by Anna Bray, but by someone else. Was the journal meant to remain hidden or did someone want us to find it? Either way, our first set of facts is Anna Bray was a golden gun hunter who fought at Twilight Gap. She was a guardian. She has had her second death, which I believe means her final death. The Exo Stranger is not a guardian, and I think all this information put together strongly indicates that Anna Bray is not the Exo Stranger. So the question is, why is almost the entirety of Anna Bray's journal removed? I think the best way to understand what may have been in the journal is to look into Clovis Bray. Clovis Bray was a man, but it was also the name of the giant research corporation that he owned. Clovis Bray had five children that we know of. Clovis Bray II, Willa Bray, Alton Bray, Anna Bray, and Elsie Bray. Now, as I said at the beginning, to truly understand how Clovis Bray operated, you need to dive into the law of our sector, which is not even officially Grimoire cards. They are literally information from the ARG website. At this point, I have to give a big shout out to Ishtar Collective for documenting all of these items on their website. Without the website, this video would not be possible. The first thing you should know is that Clovis Brain, the organization, had some extremely shady practices, even accused as nefarious, i.e. criminal. We have already seen this occur with Cade 6, where they essentially offered to free him of his debt if he became an EXO. We actually see the same thing happen in our sector law. People who have too much debt are coerced into experiments. Our sector uncovers these documents from a Dr. Shirazi who was working with Clovis Bray and conducting experiments that involved injecting a SIVA prototype. They were doing this because they were trying to make humans stronger for colonization of other planets during the Golden Age. Have a listen to Dr. Shirazi's experimental notes, which also include a conversation with a patient participating in the experiments. Z Shirazi CB PZ 1.5 Patient E, Jun, has been uncooperative, laughed unpleasantly when I told him he would receive Glory 2.1. You're running prototypes in parallel because it's cheaper and faster, he said. No ethics board on earth would ever approve. But I don't have a choice. I'm a neck deep in debt to Clovis Bray. Z Shirazi CB PZ 4.5 Jan has refused to perform required strength and intelligence tests. He's accused me, Willa Bray, and the Clovis Bray Corporation of nefarious purposes 32 times since injection. Clovis Bray destroys the world to remake it in their own image. That's their goal. Look at me. The first step to your perfect colonist. But I'm just a prototype. You know what happens to prototypes, Dr. Shirazi? Z Shirazi CB PZ 8.5. I said, you must understand. I'm trying. I wanted to see us among the stars. I ran this study because I dreamed of exploring the unknown and making new places home. I dreamed of the whole universe becoming our home. Jun said, You don't even have a home here. They treat you with suspicion. You're not a Bray. Why did you come to Mars? Did you have no home on Earth? I don't, I said. So, pretty damning documentation surrounding Clovis Bray. We have Jun, a patient who is only participating in this experiment because of the neck deep debt to Clovis Bray. And we have Jun confirming the secretive nature of Clovis Bray and the Bray family, saying that even though this scientist, Dr. Shirazi, is working for them, she will not be accepted. She is not a Bray. This is in fact exactly what occurs. After the death of one of her patients, Dr. Shirazi decides to seek out any information being hidden from her. 
She discovers that information was being concealed and it revealed that previous Clovis Bray experiments had a mortality rate of 50 to 60 percent, i.e. 50 to 60 percent of the people that were experimented on were dying. Dr. Shirazi steals credentials off another researcher and accesses this locked records. This is what it says. Z Shirazi CBPZ 16.4 After I sent my research staff home, I entered Clovis Bray's data isolation chamber with borrowed credentials. I had to know. My predecessor's annotations are sparse, but I believe the data from previous trials show mortality rates of 50 to 60% for the last generation of injectable biotech. I should have been informed of this. My report will begin with the words, unacceptable. Demonstrated risks preclude further human trials at this time. I must make Willa Bray see that this way lies disaster. Now here's the crazy thing. Akura Ray knew about this kind of practice. The Owl Sector, specifically a character named Shun, is briefing Akura Ray on the discoveries about Clovis Bray. This is what is said. Akura Ray, you wish to introduce me to your Golden Age analog. Shun, haha, no, I thought you'd be interested in Jun. This kind of coercion isn't a known Clovis Bray practice. Akura Ray, not in the books you read, perhaps. Shun. But it's in the record? Akorai. It's in the record. Akorai knew of these records and practices. Now, what does any of this have to do with Anna Bray's book in the secret room? Well, the point I'm making is this. Firstly, Clovis Bray has performed some very unethical practices during the Golden Age. Secondly, Clovis Bray has a history of hiding and concealing information. Thirdly, which I haven't spoken about in this video, but many times before, Clovis Bray created the Exos, or at least created Cade 6, Willa Bray developed SIVA and Ngram encryption, and Clovis Bray is thought to have created the Warmites. Clovis Bray is a juggernaut company with deep, deep secrets, and whatever was written in Anna Bray's journal, I imagine was highly sensitive. So, was the journal left there by someone who wanted us to discover the secrets of Clovis Bray, or is this room a secret room for more Clovis Bray corruption? Personally, I think someone is trying to help us. The reason why I think the diary was left as a clue is because of the room it was left in. The weapon foundry Dato is in the background. If you search the Destiny database for Dato, you will discover an exotic ship called the Takanomi Wings. Destiny 1 introduced some lore about a group of non-guardians called the Takanomi Rangers. These were like hunters but not guardians, and they helped shepherd survivors to the last city. Ayane Takanomi was the leader of the Rangers, and the new exotic ship implies that the Dato president is somehow involved with the Rangers. The ship reads, The city's first protectors were Ayane Takanomi and her Rangers. In the darkest days, we didn't have many guardians, and those who ghosts had revived were scattered across the solar system, far from the people who needed protection as they made their way to the city and the traveler's shadow. From their perches high up in the mountains, the Takanomi rangers guarded the refugee roads to the city. Their rifles brought down many fallen, as well as human bandits and murderers. But rangers only had one life to give. When they died, they were gone forever. So the Takanomi rangers took to planting blue flowers along the roads they watched. That way, when they fell, a piece of them would live on to guide weary travelers home. Chiyoko May, Dato President. This ship implies that the president of Dato somehow knows the Takanomi rangers. Chiyoko almost seems to be writing about them from a personal point of view, as if the Takanomi Rangers helped her, or maybe even if she was one. Considering how the Takanomi Rangers helped people, and even helped upon death by leaving flowers to guide weary travelers home, I can't help but think that the Takanomi Rangers have left a clue for us, left a clue for something to come, a warning. Knowing the Brave family, I imagine it is quite important. I imagine it could involve Siva, 
the War Minds, or even the Exos. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel, a like would be greatly appreciated, and you can leave the word Dato to represent the ties between the Takanomi Rangers and the Dato President, who may be leaving clues to guide us to safety. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Milan Games. Peace.